Hello and welcome to the Locked On Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is Thursday, September the 2nd. I am Lucas Smith. We are talking about if any Cardinals should be in the consideration for long-term or for uh, national awards. Should Adam Wainwright right be in the Cy Young conversation? Should Dylan Carlson be in the Rookie of the Year conversation? We're breaking those two things down and two other awards on today's episode of Locked On Cardinals. <laughs> Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. Whether you're watching on the YouTube channel, you're listening on your favorite Spotify or favorite podcasting platform such as Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Odyssey, wherever you may be listening, much appreciated. Today on Thursday, September the 2nd, we are brought to you by Locked on MLB. Be sure to join Walking Baseball Encyclopedia. Paul Francis Sullivan each and every day for a look at the majors, both past and present. Uh, so thank you for tuning in today for this episode of Lock John Cardinals. Big series this weekend against Milwaukee, and I will be sure to be talking about that tomorrow on Lock John Cardinals. It's going to be a good episode uh, previewing the series against the Brew Crew, um, so be sure to tune back in for that. But for today, we're going to take kind of a, a little fun episode and talk about should any Cardinals be in the consideration of for a national award, we're going to start with. Uh, we're, we're going to stay away from silver slugger and gold gloves. We're going to pick um, where there's only one winner. Uh, winner, uh, reliever of the year, rookie of the year, Cy Young, and MVP. And we're starting with with where I think that the Cardinals have the best shot, and that is in the MVP discussion. Or sorry, in the Cy Young discussion. I beg your pardon. Got a little bit ahead of myself there. Uh, but we will be talking about Adam Wainwright and the possibility of him winning a Cy Young. He has been the Cardinals' best starter, so it only makes sense to start uh, with Mr. Wainwright. As my light just went out, I apologize um, for for that. Um, we're just going to have to roll with that a little bit for here today, so my apologies for that uh, if you're watching on YouTube. But going to go ahead and break down uh, Adam Wainwright and his likelihood of him winning uh, National League Sign. Let's take a look at uh, his... Uh, his place in a bunch of different pitching categories. As of Thursday, September the 2nd, he is ninth in earned run average at 297. He is tied for third in wins at 13. He is the eighth lowest whip at 1.031. He has the eighth lowest hits per nine. Uh, this is according to baseball reference qualifiers, uh, 7.1. He is the ninth lowest based on balls per nine at 2.12. And he has the third highest innings pitched uh, at 169.2 innings. Uh, all of those according to. Uh, all those rankings involved in the National League. And I don't mean to distract, but I am just going to take a quick try and see if I can get this light to go back on. And we'll see if that light does indeed stay on. So Adam Wainwright does have a, he's in the top 10 in a lot of different categories. He is also tied for first in terms of complete games with three and in, tied for fourth with one shutout. He's tied with uh, about 10 or uh, other, 10 other pitchers um, w- with that lead, but three complete games, the only other pl- complete games, is Herman Marquez from the Colorado Rockies, as well as Zach Wheeler from the Philadelphia Phillies. And Wheeler, don't get me wrong, he is, he's a favorite to win the Cy Young. I'm not trying to be um, naive and saying that Wainwright is a surefire thing. But you got to take just about everything you can into context here when you're talking about Adam Wainwright. And so, so not only is it the numbers of what he's doing, he's also uh, in the top 10 in terms of hits allowed, home runs per nine. He's, he's the ninth lowest. And he's faced the six hundred or the third most batters at six hundred and seventy nine. So that should be looked at as impressive as well. But no matter what, and I'll get into a couple more number numbers here in a moment. What he's doing at age thirty nine, and he's now forty years old as we move into September, is remarkable. The, the fact that he's doing it at thirty nine, and hopefully will continue to do it at forty when he makes his start tomorrow, that that should be looked at as extremely. Light went out again. I, my apologies and apologies for any uh, other technical difficulties we might face here today. Um, been, been one of those days, but we're, we, we power through and talk about card baseball. Uh, but anyway, Adam Wainwright, what he's doing at age 39 and in his age 39 season is nothing short of remarkable. He is just absolutely outstanding. But there's no other way to put it. He's having one of his career years, even at age 39. That, that, in my opinion, you shouldn't just look at the numbers. You have to look at what, what, what went into producing those numbers. And for Adam Wright, one of those things that went into producing those numbers is, in fact, that he's doing this even at his age. Pretty remarkable stuff. 
And I'm not saying that he should get uh, an, an advantage only because he is 39, 40 years old. If anybody was having this kind of season, you'd put him in the top 10 of, a, of the Cy Young, in my opinion. I mean, of the stats I just named, he's in the top 10. Let's look at a couple more in the fact that he's in the top 10. He's in the top 10 of adjusted ERA plus at 130. The average for that is 100. That is adjusted based on the ballparks that he's pitching in. Um, other top 10 runs the, um, in terms of a uh, couple more uh, stat cast type things. One probability added at 2.8. Situation wins saved 3.1. Um, you, want, you want to be as high as you can on those. For, for reference, Brandon Woodruff is at 3.7, and Zach Wheeler is at 3.8. Two, just for reference in terms of what the other Cy Young candidates are. But in my opinion, Adam Wainwright, of all the guys that I'm going to talk about, Adam Wainwright is the guy that is the closest to being in this conversation, to being in that consideration. He's been that good for St. Louis. He's going to be, you know, again, I talked about this, I feel like last week or the week before. Spoiler alert, he is going to be the Cardinals Cy Young Award winner. This year. And I don't think there's any question about that. I don't think there's any debate about that. He has been the Cardinals' best pitcher all season long. In terms from a starter pitching standpoint, he has saved the Cardinals season many, many times, and he's pitched extremely well in, in, in doing so. You know, you have to pitch well in order to do that, obviously. So for Wainwright to, to put the season he's putting up with uh, the age he's doing is nothing short of remarkable. And in my opinion, that, that should put him as a dark horse. I think he's going to be top 10. If I'm voting, he's definitely top 10, in my opinion. I, I think that the numbers speak for themselves of all the ones I just mentioned. Top 10, a number of categories in his pitched, third most batters face, uh, and top 10 ERA plus, all different things that lead me to suggest that Adam Wainwright should be in the Cy Young conversation. Would he get my vote for number one? I'll be honest, probably not. Zach Wheeler is definitely uh, the favorite, in my opinion, in the National League. But the point remains that, you know, Adam Wainwright is having a phenomenal phenomenal season and should at least be considered a dark horse candidate for that um sun award for 2021 took a quick break when we get back i'll be talking a little bit about dylan carlson a rookie of the year candidate uh, for the st louis cardinals but first i want to tell you guys about direct tv stream um, it's a place where you can get all of your TV together. You no longer need a separate device that you can catch the game live. Another that lets you stream your favorite shows or you watch sports highlights on your phone. There's a simple way to get all the entertainment you need on one device, get rid of the hassle, and it is Direct TV Stream, where it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch all your favorite sports, movies, shows, all in one place. That means no more juggling different remotes or uh, buying another device ever again. The best thing about DirecTV Stream, there are no annual contracts. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV life together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. There's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content does vary by package at DirecTV Stream. The other uh, couple of players I want to talk about, or one of the next, uh, the next player I want to talk about is Dylan Carlson and his Rookie of the Year candidacy i think that for me at the beginning of the year he was one of the favorites again this is another guy that i don't think will win the entirety of the rookie of the year but if you look at according to uh, baseball references war uh, for his position is 1.9 which is top 10 in national league uh, or i'm sorry among rookies across the major leagues his slash line of 249 326 and 408 is nothing to sneeze at he debuted last season Got 16 home runs. When you look at his rookie ranks in those 16 home runs, that is good for eighth uh, among rookie ranks, according to MLB.com. Runs driven in, he is fifth at 64. And again, that, that could be a product of where he's sitting in the lineup. But he's third in triples and in doubles, he is first. He lead, leads the rookies in doubles with 33. And Jonathan India is a very nice player, and I think Jonathan India is the favorite for Rookie of the Year in the National League, and I'm sure Jeff Carr of Locked On Reds is extremely, extremely happy about that. But I do think that Dylan Carlson should get some recognition. I think in the National League, at least he should be top five. Not sure if he'll be a finalist, but Dylan Carlson does have the resume to at least be a, a top five, minimum top ten rookie. He's having a very fine season. He's been on the uptick recently as well. He, he He's... I don't think he's been the lights out player, the, the incredible dominant player that we all thought he was going to be, be coming into this season. But again, it's one season, one year. He is only 22 years of age. He's got plenty of time to mature and grow. Um, 
So I think that that, that, that is huge. And uh, breaking news right now, as I record this, uh, Adam Wainwright was just named pitcher of the month. So that, you know, he's at least got one pitcher of the month in his Scion candidacy. But anyways, back to Dylan Carlson as rookie of the year. He, he has done very well in his first year. I don't think that he's been a disappointment. You know, he hasn't necessarily been the, the flashy lights out player hundred percent of the time, but he also has not been a complete and utter disappointment. He has been very, very, very solid for, for most of the season. Yes. Maybe you'd like to see the average go up on base a little bit. Got plenty of doubles hitting some home runs. Got a chance for a 2020 season in his first, first year. That would be pretty remarkable. Um, if he goes on a tear and hits 14 home runs, you could have a 30-30 season here in 2021. However, I, I don't necessarily see that happening. But a 2020 season, four home runs in a month is not unheard of, especially for Dylan Carlson. Uh, definitely has the power to do it if he's able to, to get on a roll here. The schedule is not easy for him. But Dylan Carlson is rookie of the year. Should he get the um, you know top three? Maybe not top three, but in my opinion, he definitely should be a top five rookie of the year. He, he has done just about anything you can ask for other than consistency. And the consistency, in my opinion, will come. Um, I, I think that he's going to, to get a couple more home runs out. I think he's going to be more of a 25, 30 home run guy in his career instead of a 20 to 25. I think he's just learning the plate right now, kind of learning what method is going to work best for him. And once he learns that, I think that he's just going to fly and soar and have a wonderful career at the major league level. Does it start off with a 2021 Rookie of the Year? Who knows? I think that he definitely has uh, an outside shot at Rookie of the Year, especially if he's able to put together a really strong September. That could bode well huge because maybe he gets a little bit of a, of a recency bias or maybe his numbers start to, to even out and average out a little bit more with a strong second or strong final month of the season. And it would help out the Cardinals extreme, an extreme amount if he's able to get that strong September and um, may, maybe it carries the Cardinals a little bit to a playoff berth. So Adam Wainwright, like I can mention, just in breaking news, pitcher of the of the month. Maybe that's a sign of good things to come. And in terms of a better September, if he has a really, really solid September, brings down the ERA, innings continue to go up, he stays in the top 10 in all those categories. I think that Wainwright, like I mentioned, is definitely the person that I think gets has the best shot, rather, at being one of these names in one of these national awards. Carlson, an outside shot. Next, I'm going to talk about Giovanni Gallegos and why he – could be in consideration for reliever of the year. Uh, when you look at his ranks among uh, all relievers, he is fourth in innings pitched as a reliever at 66.2. Just the four saves because he hasn't been the closer the entire year. When you look at his whip, he's 11th at uh, 0.86. His ERA, and again, bullpen ERA, isn't necessarily the, the best way to go about it, but according to baseball.reference.com, uh, um, a 2.97 uh, is very respectable. Um, I forgot to... Filter out the non qualifiers because you got some people with nine games in here. So the ranking is inaccurate, but never the less. Strikeouts per nine is also at a very respectable number at, excuse me, at, at 10.13. He's having, he's having a, an exceptional year, just an absolute exceptional year. And again, th this is a really an, an outside of the box candidate, not, not necessarily in the top 10 outside of anything except for innings pitched. But here's my, here is my pitch. Wink, wink. Um, you know, play on words. Get it. Uh, here's my pitch for Giovanni Gallegos and Rookie of the Year. He he's been the most consistent Cardinal reliever. Has he been consistent? No. You you could definitely tell me and argue with me that he has not been completely consistent, and I will definitely grant you that. But Alex Reyes has not been consistent. Genesis Cabrera, his ERA has bloated with a couple of really really bad starts. But Giovanni Gallegos has been solid. TJ McFarland got off to a little bit of a rough start. Luis Garcia got off to a really rough start. Luis Garcia probably could be in line for reliever of the of the month as he pitched an exceptionally uh, successful August. But Gallegos, you know, you, you could argue that he's been overused, and that, that might be why he has struggled a little bit here recently. Or at least he did in the middle part of the season. But I really do think that Gallegos um, would, would be my pick. If I if every team got a choice for selecting one one player per award, Giovanni Gallegos would get my nod for reliever of the year from the St. Louis Cardinals. He's been that good for the St. Louis Cardinals. And especially when you look at who else has he been around and what bullpen arms haven't performed well, have performed well. Gallegos gets my nod there. It, I, I think he has the potential to be a really, really good closer. He's got a really solid fastball and that slider when it is right. Oh man, is it 
deadly, filthy, nasty, whatever um, word you want to use to describe it, it is that. He goes, when, when, he's, when he gets rest, he tends to pitch extremely well. When he's used right, he could be one of the best closers in all of baseball. That's what good that, that slider is, in my opinion. And that's why he would, get, he would get my nomination as a representative from the St. Louis Cardinals to be considered for the National League Reliever of the Year Award. And then when you look at who else the Cardinals would have to offer, yeah, you could offer Reyes. He was an all-star, but his second half has been just abysmal. You could offer Cabrera, but he's, he's had some, some, like I said, some blow-up starts. Gallegos, to me, is one of the clearer options. Uh, for the St. Louis Cardinals to be nominated for that award. So th- that's three awards down. That is three awards down. I think that Wainwright has an outside shot at the um, – a realistic outside shot, both and or at the same time, at the National League. Cy Young Award winner, I think Dylan Coulson has an outside shot at the National League Rookie of the Year Award. I think that Gallegos has an outside-outside shot at the National League Reliever of the Year Award. Uh, but definitely he's had a very fine season and continues to, to show that, that he is uh, a very effective reliever in the back end of the St. Louis Cardinals bullpen. One more break in the action to talk about a couple more fine, incredible, wonderful sponsors. And then I'll be telling you guys about why Paul Goldschmidt could be uh, a, a dark horse for the National League MVP. But first, I want to tell you guys about Bet Online. Football season is a week away. And as always, Bet Online is your number one stop for the Pro and college football. College football has already started, but pro and college football action this season. You get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including online's biggest half million dollar NFL contest and the world's largest two hundred thousand dollar NFL Survivor contest. Both open now at Bet Online. So head to the website now and enter the promo code Locked On for a one hundred percent welcome bonus when you sign up today. That's right. It's now one hundred. Be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo as well, as you can make a bet on the Thursday, September 9th season over between the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your wager will be refunded up to $25. For new customers only when signing up with the promo code NFL100, lots of promo codes, lots of rewards. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, whether you're wanting a Vegas casino game, baseball, basketball, boxing, don't wait and be sure to take advantage of all the great offers at betonline.ag for the 2021 season. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Today's show is also brought to you in part by rockauto.com. Rockauto.com is a family business serving auto parts customers online 20 years. You don't want to go into a local chain auto parts store that might not have all the parts you need, uh, that you could get intimidating questions. You have to wait for them to look it up. Rockauto.com saves you time, saves you money, and gives you peace of mind. You wouldn't want to spend up to 100% one other parts, so go to rockauto.com where prices are reliably low for every semester. They have everything you need, whether you need a brake bar, a tail lamp, motor oil, or even new carpet. So go explore their easy-to-use website today at rockauto.com to find a solution for your auto part needs. Rockauto.com is where you can find all the parts available for your car or truck. Be sure to write the, the how did you hear about us box locked on so they know that we sent you amazing selection reliable below prices all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com one more quick segment here is uh, wrapping up the show today um, who could be MVP candidate for the St. Louis Cardinals I think that for, for me if I, again similar to reliever of the year if I had to suggest one person uh, for the St. Louis Cardinals it would be Paul Goldschmidt According to base reference, war position players, he is 7th in the National League at 4.5. Offensive war, 3.9, that is 10th in the National League. When you look at games played, he's got 130, third most at-bats at 501, third most plate appearances, uh, total bases, fifth hits, fourth, the fourth most hits. Uh, most on the Cardinals right in front of Tommy Edmund, who's at 139. Um, runs batted in, 82, that is good for 7th in the National League, right behind Ron Arenado at 85. Um, fifth most singles, just to throw that in there. Uh, eighth most runs scored in the National League. Um, ten or tenth place rather in extra base hits at fifty three. Uh, so, so plenty of other um, statistic or uh, stat cast stats that I won't uh, get into too much here. Um, but Paul Goldschmidt, again, more of an outside shot. I understand that, but definitely could see it happening of him getting a MVP nod. Uh, 
mostly if, if, like I said, the scenario happens where I get to nominate one person from the St. Louis Cardinals to be a PK, I would nominate Paul Goldschmidt. He has just been absolutely on a tour stretch offensively here in the second half, especially in, in August specifically. Uh, he did not win Player of the Month for, for the National League. I thought he might. Uh, the National League Player of the Month was C.J. Crone uh, for the uh, Colorado Rockies. But, man, he, he must have been up there because he had an absolute torrid. He's had an incredible, incredible, incredible uh, for the season. He's really carried the Cardinals. And the Cardinals didn't need a lot of things to go right here in the, in the final month of the season as they get ready to play Milwaukee tomorrow. But one thing that needs to continue to go right is Paul Goldschmidt. He can carry this offense. Um, you know, guys maybe like Tyler O'Neill or Dylan Carlson, Harry Bader, when they're all right, they can impact the game more so than Paul Goldschmidt can. But Paul Goldschmidt has proven, not only this season, but throughout his career, that he has the capability of carrying a team offensively for a long stretch of time. So if he can, can stay hot, Nolan can get going and stay hot, O'Neill can get going and stay hot as well. Again, all ifs, but Paul Goldschmidt to me is the guy in this lineup that makes the biggest difference. He's going to be the guy in there day in, day out. He's not going to be in the office. Paul Goldschmidt could be the, you know, you could argue that he is the key in this Los Cardinals offense. Nationally, MVP, he has eluded him a couple of times. I think he has a better shot at MVP than Giovanni Gallegos does necessarily at reliever of the year. But I think that Paul Goldschmidt does have an outside shot at the MVP, especially if maybe if he goes on an unbelievable torrid stretch here to close out the season in September. That remains to be seen. But um, in terms of who get a gold glove or silver slugger, Harrison Bader is definitely a gold glove candidate, candidate in my opinion. And I know some of you might be rolling your eyes right now. Tyler O'Neill, maybe, but definitely the Cardinals are going to have two very good candidates at the hot corners in Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt. Definitely think that they are both going to be favorites for that. And then when you you look at other uh, Gold Glove opportunities, maybe Yachty, uh, just because of the resume. Uh, Silver Slugger, everybody I just mentioned, minus Harrison Bader and Yadier Molina, I think all have legit cases for Silver Slugger. Maybe if Adam Wainwright can get a couple more hits at, uh, at the pitcher position. Uh, he can be in. He might be able to win the last Silver Slugger in National League history. That would be pretty remarkable. But pretty short show today, but kind of a fun one. Uh, let me know who you guys think should be considered for different national awards by the St. Louis Cardinals, whether it be an MVP, Cy Young, Reliever of the Year. Let me know on Twitter at LJ Fastball. Let me know. Uh, you can tweet the show as well at LO underscore Cardinals. Comment on a picture on Instagram at LO underscore Cardinals. And as always, you can email me anytime at lockedoncards at gmail.com. Be sure to tune back in tomorrow as I preview the Milwaukee Brewers series. Um, starting of a very, it, it starts a very difficult schedule for the St. Louis Cardinals. So uh, it's going to be a fun month of September. Hopefully, the Cardinals can stay in the race. Be sure to tune back in tomorrow. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcasting platforms, I thank you and be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic rest of your day.